such a helpful girl, helping the ranger with the elk program. interesting history they've gone through a lot of troubles here a lot of times having to do with people being in this area um, and people sort of abusing their presence here so um, we really love elk and we really are trying to protect them and keep them nice and healthy now um, but there are some things in the past that we've done that weren't so great for the elk um, and because of that the elk have really altered this landscape and changed rocking animals here they just kind of used what they needed and um, the system kept working really well when it was just them but when people moved into this area um, to find gold or um, to experience the beauty of the mountains here and lots and lots of people started moving out to this area um, they did start over hunting and they started ranching in these areas and started doing a lot of things to the ecosystem here that really altered it so by the year 1900 the elk were totally gone from this area we had no more elk in the Rocky Mountain National Park region. So in 1913 and 1914, they were actually reintroduced from the Yellowstone area. And in 1915, the park became a national park. That was the year that its inauguration happened. So when it became a national park, people couldn't hunt here anymore. And there also were very few, um, if not any, grizzlies and wolves regulating their population by preying on them. So now we have these new elk here who weren't very migratory because they didn't really know um, where they were. They weren't used to the land and generationally um, they learn how to migrate. So at first when they got here, they sort of just plopped themselves in Moraine Park or in Horseshoe Park and didn't really move a ton. And there was nothing regulating their population, so it skyrocketed. Because of that, they started eating everything. They started eating all the grass and all the willow and all the aspen trees. And because of that, the water table changed. So animals like beavers um, and different birds and butterfly species who depend on that vegetation couldn't live here anymore either. So to fix this, between the 60s or the 40s and the 60s, park managers actually um, did quite a bit of culling, which is lethal removal of these animals. Um, but public opinion didn't really um, like that idea. They didn't like the idea of um, them killing these animals in the park. So they um, changed to a more hands-off approach in the 60s and stopped regulating, hoping that nature would sort itself out. However, when they stopped culling the animals in the park, um, again, their population skyrocketed. So now we have what's called the Elk and Vegetation Management Plan, which was put in place in 2008. Um, and that calls for these fences that you guys probably saw in the park. Did you guys see any of those fences? Yeah. 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 So those fences are in the park. Um, they're kind of like recovery zones for willow and aspen and other vegetation so that those um, plants can grow nice and tall and strong. And once they're tall enough, the fences will be moved away so that the elk can kind of browse on the lower um, parts of the plant but won't kill the entire plant. Um, by over grazing or over this happy ending. So we're not all park managers, right? Like I don't get to decide we're gonna reintroduce wolves or that we're gonna do different things in the park that could potentially alter um, the population of animals or change these wetland areas, right? But we as visitors can really do a lot of things here to help just keep this place wild and keep this space um, and the animals in it living as naturally as they possibly can. So if you guys have done any of your Junior Ranger books, I don't know if any of you guys have them yet, yeah. but um, yeah, you might have probably learned already or you might already know some really great tips and tricks and things that we can do as visitors here every day to um, just help keep wildlife wild. So if you guys want to write, and I'll write too, we have supplies here, you can grab a sticky note. Um, leaving the animals alone and not taking things from nature, not feeding the wildlife, 
not littering so that animals can live more wild and free, teaching your friends about the park. I love this one, following the rule of thumb, and that goes along with um, leaving the animals alone. Who, who wrote that one? The rule of thumb? Would you no, mind teaching the group here? Yeah.